Hey guys, it's David from Automotive Press. I'm really excited to be here at the New York Auto Show in front of a new Subaru SUV, which is fully electric. It's called the Trail Seeker. And it's a big surprise. None of us expected a brand new SUV that's also fully electric to show up here at New York. We have Evan here, who's in charge of the product management for Canada. Do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Yeah, I'm Evan Lindsay. I'm the car line manager for the new Trail Seeker. And, uh, working with uh, Subaru Canada, and I'm so happy to be here to introduce this uh, exciting new EV. All right, thank you so much, Evan. So tell me a little bit more about, conceptually, what the Trail Seeker is, and how this is positioned differently than the Solterra, which also has gone through some changes for 2026. So we know that that's behind us right here. But what is uh, the positioning, I guess, between Solterra and the Trail Seeker? Yeah, so while the, the Solterra for 2026 and the, the new Trail Seeker share the same EG, ESGP architecture. Yes. Uh, there's very unique positioning for the Trail Seeker. So the packaging for the uh, the powertrain and the, the battery is different. So we have dual 167 kilowatt uh, motors front and rear on the Trail Seeker. We have a 74.7 kilowatt hour battery. Um, the new Solterra has a 77 kilowatt hour battery and it's got a 167 motor in the front and 88 in the rear. So mm. the powertrains are different. And, right. and also with the Trail Seeker, we've uh, had a lot um, kind of more influence in the engineering from a Subaru perspective. So we've been able to sprinkle kind of mm. that Subaru spirit and Subaru DNA yeah. into the product in terms mm. of how it's engineered, how it handles, how it drives, mm. the all-wheel drive system, etc. Okay, interesting. And I had some chance to uh, speak to a chief engineer from Japan also. And from my understanding is that uh, right now the Soterra is obviously based on BZ4X from Toyota, built in the same factory in Motomachi. And I've been to that factory a number of times and I saw both the Soterra and BZ4X being built there. So it was pretty exciting to see that. But um, this one is going to be built at the Subaru plant, which is in Guma, Japan, under Subaru engineering. So what he explained to me is that this is more of a Subaru influence in terms of uh, the final engineering and also the final production design compared to the Soterra, which is much more influenced from Toyota. So I, he even said to me that um, the makeup of the engineering team it has more Toyota people for the Soterra slash BZ4X, but for this one, there's more Subaru people because the supplier, engineering, manufacturing are all handled on the Subaru side. And of course, that brings up a question which you won't be able to answer on our behalf, but uh, with Toyota has a Toyota version of this model and from what I'm hearing through the rumors are yes there will be a Toyota version of this one built at the Subaru plant. So this collaboration I think is really fascinating for me as an engineer uh, and also makes it very interesting for the buyers and consumers because you now have a two choice either Soterra which is also really updated for 2026 uh, or the Troll Seeker. Uh, so, but tell me a little bit more about the demographic. Who will buy a trail seeker versus the Soterra, for example. Yeah, so you know, from this angle, it's hard to tell. Um, the uh, the front fascia mm -hmm. shares, shares the new signature EV design language with the Soterra, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's got the new signature illuminated emblem. There's uh, six point DRL headlights, um, and uh, the main headlight kind of lower in the, in the front fascia. Yeah, this is the real headlights, right? Yes, this yeah. is a real headlight here, and there's actually a front washer underneath as oh, well. Okay, I see. To okay. help with yeah. uh, snow and slush in the winter to clear the headlight. Okay. But beyond that, the design is actually quite different. So quite we've unique. got a lot more cladding uh, around the front sides and rear of the vehicle. You know, most noticeable is the cargo area. So the okay, the, maybe we should yeah, go we can walk on around. The side. And, yeah, there's lots of people walking around, but yeah. hopefully we can uh, <laughs> figure that out. Um, but you got the big cladding in the yeah, front so, here Yeah, so also. here you've got a lot more yeah. kind of cladding. So kind mm -hmm. of those exposed areas on the body are unpainted. So when you're off-roading or on the trails, uh, you're less yeah. likely to scratch right. You're not going to damage uh, this. It's actually, it bends a little bit too, it looks like. Yeah. yeah. And then underneath as well, we've got, got some more rugged cladding as well, which kind of lifts the, uh, the kind mm -hmm. of the profile of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's got a 210 millimeter ground clearance. So again, okay. exceptional ground clearance for uh, for EVs, we've got available 20-inch wheels, um, but it's it's still a good uh, sidewall on the tire. So again, mm. on and off-road uh, comfort is uh, it's still there. And I think ground clearance in in English is uh, 8.3 inches. 8.3 inches. 8 .3 inches uh, yeah. in, in 
you know, in, in US and, yes. and 210 millimeters in, in metric. Okay. Yeah. And compared to the Sotera, this car is also higher, is that right? Higher, longer, and wider also? Uh, no, the width is the same. The same? So really the big difference is here in, in the tailgate area. Okay. So the cargo area has been extended. The roof line is 25 millimeters higher, but mm -hmm. it's carried flat all the way to the end. Okay. We've got an extra 150 millimeters in the rear, so that's about six inches. Right, uh, in Long, the rear. longer than the Solterra. Longer right? than the Solterra. Yeah. And, and then it, we have- It's from the overhang, right? It's from the, yes. the wheelbase yeah, back. The, yeah, the yeah. wheelbase is the same, same. and the overhang yeah. uh, is, is where the extra length is. And then that really contributes to mm -hmm. uh, an exceptionally versatile cargo area. Yes. So that translates to this uh, very wide, tall, cargo opening. Mm. Uh, it's very long yeah, it's really uh, long. as well. Can, so there's I can actually- barely touch the back of the seat. Yeah, and with, yeah. this, with the seats up, uh, it has 980 liters of capacity. Uh -huh. Do you know what um, that is in cubic feet or? Uh, I don't have the okay, cubic that's feet. Okay, that's okay. We'll put that in the, in the yeah. comment below there. But anyway, so it's, yeah. it's I mean, clearly big. It's yeah. wi wide and long and also long this way. A uh, little bit of space in that. Oh, there's actually quite yep. a bit of space Yeah, there's in some there. space underneath yeah. as well. So you can put the charging cable under there. Mm. You can put some more gear. Um, but it, it's got a nice low Op uh, low sill. opening, but yeah. the sill the sill height's quite low, but uh, the opening's very okay. wide, and and again, it just increases the versatility and functionality of the product. So there's no uh, front in the front, right? Uh, no, there's, there, there's, you know, no, the, there's no space. The, the EV powertrain components right. are, are okay. good, but then there's also um, you know one touch folding seats as well, mm. so it's really easy to lengthen the, the cargo mm -hmm. area, okay. uh, and and it's you know it's nearly really flat, long. You very can, long, I guess very you flat. Could, you could almost sleep in there, I guess. Maybe maybe diagonally, you can put a little bed in there, maybe for camping. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, you know, it's not quite full you know, length. You, you probably wouldn't want to spend a whole week in there, <laughs> that's but uh, if you need to overnight quickly, then <laughs> but it's that's nice good. and flat. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but importantly as well, you know, you talk about camping and overnighting mm -hmm. with the new roof rail design. You can actually put a rooftop tent. Right. Okay. So you're this able. takes more capacity. So it has right? more capacity yeah. for that. Yeah. What was the increased capacity of the roof rack? Uh, you know? So it's 800 pounds on the. Roof. 800 pounds. So that's the static weight this way, Sta right? Static and then dynamic. Yeah. It's uh, 220 or 100 kilos. Yeah, that's sideways pulling sideways. Yeah. Or dynamic is when the vehicle's moving. Oh, when it's moving. Okay. Yeah. Is there also a side pull? Uh, I'm not familiar with the side uh, okay. side pull spec on the trail okay. secret itself. But 800 pounds is quite a bit. On on the um, I just found that from the outback, more than this is 700 pounds. It's even more than that. Mm. So you could put a roof rooftop, uh, I guess a tent, and a couple of people can sleep and be held supported by the roof racks. Yeah, right? that's exactly. the whole idea. I guess. Yeah. So you know you'd mentioned you know the type of buyer and is it a different buyer to uh, to the Salterra? And, mm. and really it's uh, you know it's that buyer who's Still looking for the Subaru capability. You know, the Solterra is exceptionally capable. It's got significant enhancements for mm -hmm. 2026. We're really excited about this product. Yeah. But now we just have a different flavor that offers, mm -hmm. you know, unique attributes in terms mm -hmm. of the functionality and the versatility of the product. And, yeah. and uh, similar to the ICE products in our lineup, you know, mm -hmm. our, our Crosstrek, our Forester, and Outback, mm -hmm. you know, they offer kind of, you know, the Subaru DNA and core Subaru attributes. However, they kind of have their own flavor and their positioning within the marketplace. And, right. Okay. And, you know, our customers are attracted to the different mm -hmm. kind of functional elements of, of the vehicle and the design of the vehicle. So it's similar with our EV family mm -hmm. now, where okay. we're expanding it. We have multiple product offerings, and now we have more choice for our mm -hmm. customers depending on okay. their needs and their mm -hmm. lifestyle. Well, it's interesting that also um, in terms of engineering, that Subaru came up first with a bigger, larger model with respect to Solterra versus Toyota. And now Toyota may have to learn from you guys or borrow from you guys. So I found that quite interesting because I, I sp spent some time talking to a chief engineer and uh, he said that um, like they had many discussions with Toyota but it was a, a very much a collaboration discussion between yes. the two, both giving in many different ideas. It's not just one or the other. Uh, and he said that the only thing that where they maybe disagreed a little bit is Toyota doesn't like uh, long overhang. So they wanted to shorten the car. And then uh, the chief engineer said, no, we want this length to provide that extra space. And so he, wa he won the argument apparently. <laughs> and, and therefore, it's, that's why it's 150 millimeter longer versus 120 or 130. Mm -hmm. That's how he explained to me. Uh, so I found it interesting, and I think it's a really a good concept. Uh, Solterra, pretty solid uh, purchase and buy already, but um, but this one being bigger, larger, more capable, and of course we don't know the price yet. But even with an increase in price, 
for me anyway, I would prefer Trail Seeker versus the Solterra. Uh, also, it looks better, I think. It's subjective, but for me, yeah, I mean, it just looks, looks cool. Looks are subjective, and it really yeah. comes down to what the customer's preferences are and what their needs are, and we just kind of leave it to them to decide. But it, mm -hmm. we're really excited to have you know, multiple product offerings. And, you know, you mentioned capability, you know, both of these vehicles are exceptionally capable, yes, um, yeah. especially within the EV space. Mm -hmm. and, and so, again, it's not necessarily saying, you know, one is more capable or more of a Subaru than the other, mm, okay. uh, but it's really just about the fact that we have different product offerings mm. that meet different needs, different and, needs. and yeah. both are exceptionally capable, and, mm. but they just have different functionality based on those needs of the customer. Right. Okay, perfect. Can we hop inside sure. and just yeah. finish off by talking about the interior? and? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you can point out a few things to me. Okay, so we're inside the uh, Troll Seeker now. Uh, Evan, do you want to just show us what might be different between this and the Solterra? Uh, yeah, so within the, uh, the interior, the instrument panel uh, is newly designed for these next generation uh, EVs. So uh, the design language and functionality is, is very similar between the two models. Mm -hmm, okay. um, we have this new 14 inch uh, display that's got a, uh, a landscape layout. There's still some physical buttons and controls, um, but also from a functionality perspective, we, we have this dual uh, mm. wireless charging setup. So, you know, both, for both, both, yeah. both front seat pass, you know, the driver and the passenger, you know, now can just throw their phone on, mm -hmm. charge it. Is that, is um, that on the Solterra? Solterra that's on the Solterra as well. Solterra as well. Also, yep. okay. So that's the yeah. yeah, so so this uh, is very similar. There's some trim details and differences mm -hmm. between the two, okay. but uh, in general, the layout and the, the features and functions it's similar. Are, okay. are similar. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, here we've got our controls for X mode and uh, and some of the other driving modes, and we have uh, paddle shift control for uh, the regenerative braking right. settings. Okay. Um, and so... You know, again, it's it's modernized. It's very functional. Um, the ergonomics and uh, usability and mm. and uh, kind of that ease of use for mm -hmm. uh, for our customers has been enhanced. Um, okay, okay. But again, it's much more. Uh, you know, it's updated and um, much you know more usable and functional. Okay. Just curious. I know you can't turn this turn this on right now, but this is. Um, I, I believe it's the same system that's in the BZ4X. Is that right? The software behind. They've been so it's been updated. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for 2026, mm -hmm. I can't speak specifically to mm -hmm. uh, the BZ4X right. software and and and, uh, and the, diff the specific differences. Okay, okay. Them. But yeah. uh, but for Subaru for 2026, it's been updated, um, it's been updated yeah. and uh, you know this technology is shared with uh, okay. with Toyota. So my, my side comment on my end is it is the same as the Toyota software. It's uh, in fact it's exactly the same as what's on the Lexus RZ or RZ because the RZ also have the same knob here in here and this part is the climate control that'll show up when you turn it on uh, and it's, it's the same 14 system again they also updated for 2026 so I assume it's the same system underneath I know you can't make that comment but but I can <laughs> um, all right so I like the fact that Subaru has like a softer material like this is soft and the door is also somewhat soft mm -hmm. and it's not too many hard surfaces and thankfully also not a lot of piano black like this a little bit here obviously but not here it's gray plastic so i'm really thankful that they did it that way because we honestly don't think piano black is a is a good idea in the design but they scratch so much they're too shiny and they reflect too much light and stuff so i'm glad that they that you guys didn't do that mm -hmm. so uh, but this is an exciting time for subaru lots of new models uh, and, uh, you know, Trail Seeker is additional choice, I guess, for consumers who wants a bigger, maybe a little bit more rugged looking. I think it's the best looking EV in this price range. Well, actually, we don't know the price range yet, but assuming it's a little bit higher than Solterra, I think that in this market, it's one of the best looking one. It has a very much a Subaru feel to it. So I'm excited for you guys. I'm also excited that it's got longer range. I think it's 420 kilometers. Uh, up to 420. It's, it's approximate. To? We don't have the final... Uh uh, certification numbers mm -hmm. available yet, but okay. uh, we're anticipating it'll be kind of up to that 420 kilometer range. Okay, super. Either way, it's, it's you know, vastly improved compared to before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and 0 to 60 is about 5 seconds, I, I think you guys said. Uh, 0 to 60 is uh, estimated to be 4.4 seconds. 4.4 so, seconds, you know, Very okay. quick accelerating. Yeah. It has uh, 375 net system horsepower, horsepower through those dual 167 mm. kilowatt motors. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, with the all-wheel drive system, it has mm. unique sensors 
in calibration compared to uh, the Salterra. Okay. Um, so it has the addition of um, kind of lateral side to side sensors in terms of a wheel slippage, mm -hmm. um, but also within the regenerative braking system, it can use that system to distribute torque front and rear. Okay, uh, I see. And okay. basically, it creates a better balance mm -hmm. um, and transfer of, of torque mm -hmm. through the all wheel drive system, which okay. enhances driving stability but also control on snowy and slippery mm -hmm. surfaces. So, okay. so that's one of the exciting yeah. things specifically for the Canadian market for Trail mm -hmm. Seeker mm -hmm. is uh, a lot of emphasis and focus was put on winter performance and right. so we have the new um, preconditioning system mm -hmm. that allows uh, sub-zero uh, charging performance that's you know basically equivalent to normal um, you know normal weather mm -hmm. 20 okay. degree charging performance um, we have you know a rear wiper we've got the new um, uh, washers on the headlights and mm. uh, the camera mm -hmm. and then we've got the all-wheel drive system enhancements and, mm. and the suspension calibration is also different okay. uh, so you know really what again while it shares the same platform it really is a unique product with mm -hmm. unique positioning and unique functionality and design mm. so okay. we're really excited to, to, to launch it and uh, you know we can't wait for you to get behind the wheel uh, Definitely, uh, uh, yeah. you know closer to uh, launch time yes and also the um, the charging is faster now right? 0 to 80 percent in about 35 approximately minutes. 35, yeah, 35 minutes, minutes. Yeah. is now the nax connector so it's yep yes yeah, so we have yeah. the nax connector so again that creates a lot of flexibility in terms of where you can charge mm -hmm. um you know and if customers have a ccs charger at their home mm -hmm. or at their work you know adapters will be available for sure. them to use so right. um so really it just you know expands the availability of charging um and also uh you know improves the performance in all mm. weather conditions so right. you know they can keep driving and enjoying their their new trail seeker all right well thank you so much thanks evan yeah, thank appreciate much, all appreciate your uh, help and insight we're very excited for subaru at the new york auto show so many different uh, new models and so it's you know outback outback wilderness and new Solterra, uh new trail seeker there's a lot of stuff going on with you guys so i wish you the best uh, in, the, in the next uh, journey here as you guys uh, continue to expand your lineup and it's going to be exciting because there's so much good thing about Subaru products in general so thank you well, again. Thank you very much and yeah. thanks for joining us. It's we'll been see you guys pleasure. later.